Now, there's no doubt in anyone's mind, including the defense in this case, that he killed the child. No one's questioning that. The question is the motivation behind the killing. Was it something of self-defense or was it something that could be completely prevented? And I found it very difficult to believe him when he got on TV and was saying that I, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't do anything. He didn't seem remorseful. You know, the more evidence I started looking into it, I saw the, the, the MySpace page from five years ago where he was talking, you know, saying racist things about Mexican people. And for those people who don't think Latino people can be racist, I just think you don't understand anything about humanity. But we'll get into that later. Um, and I think that the, the reality is that I found it difficult to believe his perspective. And for those of you who think he is innocent, then this is who you think is innocent. Someone who said that it was all God's plan. Someone who said that he didn't regret anything or he wouldn't change anything about that evening. I mean, if I had taken someone's life that I didn't have to, you know what I mean? The, uh, especially a 17 year old child, I'd have wished for anything to be different, you know? That's not regret implying guilt. That's just regret killing a human being that you didn't have to. Somebody didn't have to die because of this. I would have said anything. I would have said, you know what? I wish that I slipped and, and broke my arm that morning in the shower so that I wouldn't have been out there in the middle of the night. I'd have been at the hospital and then I'd have been home with my family and my wife and my father and my mother and I wouldn't have shot an unarmed child that was walking through a shortcut of a building to get home. Now, if that's a fact, Am I lying to people? I'm not the one who's emotionally charged about this. I'm not even the one who spent a ma the majority of any amount of time really tweeting about this case or, or, or Facebooking or going on and on. I followed it very quietly. And I said to myself, maybe about a week ago, I said, yo, listen, the, the first time that I really had talked about it in a while, I said, this dude is like the new OJ. And look at all the things that are happening in this country that we're being distracted by with this particular case. Now, does that mean we should forget about it? You know, I had people tell me, oh my God, you know, Obama and the administration won a race riot because of this. We shouldn't talk about this. And I'm like, yo, dude, are you that much of a coward that you're afraid to have a discussion about race? Are, are you afraid to talk about the history of America? Because I'm not. And if that's the case, even if that's true, that Obama and them won a race riot, which is the most ridiculous conspiracy theory that I've heard so far. But if, and if that's true, does that mean we should sweep racism under the rug again for the benefit of your ego? Because you are not mature enough to handle a conversation about it? I think that the best thing that could potentially come from this horrible, senseless tragedy is the final straw in everybody in this situation saying, you know, we do need to have an honest conversation about race. We do need to have a conversation about what you would think if the situation was different. We, and for example, if Zimmerman had been a fat black dude and Trayvon had been a, you know, skinny little half white, half Latino guy, you know, which is another thing that people brought up to me. They said, oh, well, this isn't about racism because he's, you know, his, his mother is Hispanic, and I'm like, dude, I, I've known Latino people that are more racist, 10 times more racist than white people. You know, it's partially ingrained in, in part of the culture, so to speak. They, they see, you know, unfortunately in many instances, Spain as their motherland. Spain is not your motherland, you poor, confused, Moorish, Latin-speaking Negro. Uh, no, that would be Africa and the indigenous peoples of Latin America. Yes, there are lots of European immigrants in, in uh, Latin America. And to them, yeah, I'm sure that they identify with Spain or Italy or other places that they come from. But the vast majority of us come from Africa or come from those indigenous peoples that are there. And we're a mixture of that. That's something that should be celebrated, not to despise one part of you. Because essentially what you're saying is, I despise the indigenous people and the African people that were stolen and enslaved and had their rights taken from them. And I emulate the Spaniard who raped all the women, stole all the gold, and then lied to people about their 
history. And I, I look back at it and I say to myself, we can't separate race from this case, but at the same time, I think that perhaps it would have benefited the prosecution to not make this solely about a racial issue, but make it about somebody's irresponsibleness and the fact that a child died and it didn't, you didn't have to make it a, a sensationalized issue. It could have simply been, this could have been anyone's child, a black child, a white child. If you believe that he has the capacity to be innocent, then you're telling me that he killed someone justifiably and that you would believe him in the same instance if he was a big fat black dude and the guy was a tiny little white guy. But when you start telling me, oh, well, well what then what, a, what would a white kid be doing robbing a house? Then, then that, that's when the racism comes out of you. When you tell me, well, then I don't think a white kid could have, 17 year old white kid could have beat a big fat black dude to death with his own bare hands. That's when the racism comes out of you. Because essentially what you're telling me is that this is something that a black child could do that a white child could not do. This is something that is thoroughly ingrained in our mind. And I think we, we do need to have an honest conversation about race in this country, which we're not. People will say that he was found um, not guilty, but that he was not innocent. For example, Casey Anthony was found not guilty but the vast majority of people think that she's not innocent. I mean, the, the law of the land is what people are hiding behind in this case. They say, this is the law, we must obey the law. Okay, well, when Obama sets up laws that you don't like, that's the law too. Are you gonna respect that or you're gonna pick and choose about which laws you want to obey and which ones you aren't? The, the framework of this is within the constitutionality of what that reflects. And if somebody's civil rights have been violated, if somebody has been followed, somebody has been profiled, somebody has been targeted, and you find that these individuals are willing to use any measure that they can to demonize the victim rather than discuss the ramifications of what would have transpired if this had been, you know, a, a case where for example, it, it wasn't a child that died. If it was another individual, if it wasn't a, if it was a full-grown man that was walking through there, then people wouldn't have been maybe as outraged. They would have been like, "Oh my God, this is a," you know. But OJ did something incredibly taboo too. He killed a woman, which in America is looked down upon. You know, Zimmerman has the same effect because. He killed a minor, he killed a child. That's looked down upon. Even though the United States government once, you know, they've killed children before. The youngest person they executed was a 14 year old black child, which they had no evidence, none whatsoever, um, and they sent him to the electric chair. So when I say that he's the new OJ, I think that I mean that he's someone who may have been found innocent in a court of law, which a lot of people don't agree with, and he will have to face a civil justice suit. I'm, I'm sorry, a civil suit. Um, the Department of Justice has now said that they're going to investigate the case. But I think that that's a fraud, honestly. And I, I, don't, I don't really trust what Holder or Obama have said about the case anyway. So, and I, I mean, I can explain why I feel that way too. No, I think there will. But in terms of the Department of Justice, I think that that's just like in, in, in the framework of how it looks. I think that this entire country was skeptical of Obama and I think that even black people found themselves skeptical of Obama. But if this is going to get him back in their good graces, when in reality the Supreme Court has overturned all these decisions to allow states to make up these ridiculous rules for voting rights, where we've had a Supreme Court decision that prevents 80% uh, of the people who have a case against pharmaceutical companies, huge donors to the Obama administration, and every other, by the way. It's not just him that's corrupt. Uh, but I'm just saying, if that's the case, then how can we not look at this and say that this has been a distraction for us? But even if it is a distraction, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about race. But at the same time, I'm not willing to fly back into the arms of the administration and give them the moral standing of the people that are hunting for justice. No, 
you're trying to incarcerate and murder people that are whistleblowers. You want people, you believe that someone that, that tells us that you've been spying on us illegally, he's a traitor. No, he's not a traitor, you're the traitor. You betrayed America. And I'm not talking about just the Obama administration, I'm talking about the previous conservative administration before him. Because I don't look at that paradigm in the same way that other people do. You know, unfortunately, I think some people are stuck in a, a 20th century frame of mind when it comes to that. And w when I look at this case, I see people divided along those lines as well, too. You know, there are people who, and, and it's really sad because, Vlad, I've seen people that are online that are unabashed racists, meaning that they have no problem being called a racist. Yes, I believe that one race is superior to another. There are neo-Nazis out there that are saying, long live Zimmerman. Right? All over the internet. And I know that there are people that think that he's innocent and they feel like they're being called racists unjustifiably. And they, they probably are. They're probably not full of hatred, but they just have a, an opinion based on some fact and some emotion like everybody else's. This situation is about who you believe. It's about do you believe that Trayvon was this thug that some of the right wing, a lot of the right wing media uh, was claiming that he was. And this is the sad part, because I've known uh, people from conservative families, both white and black, for years. You know what I mean? And uh, people know me, I travel in a wide array of, 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 political, uh, of a political spectrum for people. Whether it be a socialist, whether it be you know someone who's in my family who's ultra conservative, highly religious. I know friends that are atheists, whether they're Jewish, Muslim, Christian. I, I just want to remind people: how can you demonize a child like that for having you know a, a marijuana in his system for three or four days ago? First of all, marijuana is not a violent drug; it doesn't promote. You know, people don't you just get high off weed and go out on a raping and murder spree. You know, you're thinking of liquor, which is something that's perfectly legal in this country. And I think that what's sad about this particular case is that that, that when you look at it, weed doesn't promote violence. Liquor, in many cases, promotes violence. Obviously not rampant murder uh, on, a, on a blind scale, but at the same time, these children from these conservative people that I know, or the children of conservative people, weed is about the tamest thing that I think they do. And it doesn't matter what you know, race they are or whatever, but does that mean that they should be demonized and criminalized? And how would those parents feel if a police officer stopped the car and shot one of them and then said, everybody said, oh, well, you know what? Your kid had weed in his system. That means that he's a criminal. That means that he's a thug. You know, and when I saw uh, hit Zimmerman's brother shamelessly getting on the media and trying to uh, getting on CNN and trying to turn the tables almost as if to say hey I want to know what makes children angry like Trayvon to go try and find a gun or try and and, and use drugs I want to know what makes somebody like your brother uh, ignorant to the fact that he can just ignore a police a, a policeman's order when they tell you not to to follow somebody. And I want to say one more thing about this thing, Vlad. In the trial, it came out that when the person was put on the stand, that they claimed, and th again, this shows collusion between the state and between the prosecution and the defense to move towards the same direction. They said that it was more of a suggestion than an order. So a cop told you something and it's a suggestion now and not an order? I'm sorry, but if I do something, I'm doing something in the street and a cop tells me something and I ignore him and I keep doing what I'm doing and I get arrested and I go to court and I say, hey man, I didn't know that was an order. I thought that was just one of your suggestions. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's why I've always thought there were so many holes in this case, not just from the prosecution side, but also, I mean, sorry, not just from the defense side, but also from the prosecution. I don't trust them to police their own. I don't trust the police to police the police. I've always said there should be an independent civilian council. Oh, you're afraid of a witch hunt? Guess what? 
so are we. You're in business with Def Jam and you're helping them sell records. Universal, you're helping them sell records. So what exactly is it for sale, Kanye? <laughs> I don't get it, I'm confused. You know, don't be, you know, fake revolutionary for profit. I enjoyed it, it was awesome. I wish I would have uh, been a part of it. All right, so do you enjoy the Eve Stevie sex tape? It was, it was pretty, it was pretty all right. I had, I had fun watching it. 